Well, now it's time to expand that idea of family into relationships. Facet number three in the eight facets of life. It's been asked when you're in a conversation with someone, are you actively engaged in that conversation? Or are you simply waiting for your chance to talk? Well, we're joined now by author Chris Conley as we continue our series on the eight facets of life, a, a common sense approach to achieving a balanced life. And we've talked about personal development, we've talked about family, now we're going to talk about relationships. And, and the key to this, I think, maybe goes back to kind of to what I alluded to is when we're in a conversation with somebody, are we really engaged in that conversation or are we just simply waiting for our chance to talk? Right. And, and I think that's so many people are that way. They wait for that um, opening to get their story in. So as we look to balance our life through relationships, the question we're going to come to for this segment is talking about what is a true friend? Yeah, and I think, I think the number one answer to that that I hear is a true friend accepts me as I am. And that sounds good on the surface, but I think the guy at the drive through window accepts you as you are. You know, you pay your money and you're on your way. I think the better definition is uh, a true friend is someone who holds me to a higher standard, someone that encourages me, but also is there to correct me if I'm out of line. And I think it goes back to challenging us. Right. People that we remember, the people we want to be around are those that challenge us at some level. Right. Yeah. I think we're there for each other. Um, they help us, we help them. And so it's that kind of relationship. And that goes back to <clears throat> something we heard quite often growing up, something that we've probably told our our children, our grandchildren, our, our nieces, our nephews, or what have you, is who you are around really will influence, will impact on who you become. Yeah, you know, and, and the question is, at what age is that not an issue? Because we know it's an issue when we're five, but it's also an issue when we're 35 or 55. The people we're around are going to either pull us up or drag us down. And I guess, you know, and this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier about personal development. If we want to grow, if we want to continue to get better, then it behooves us to not only surround ourselves with people who are going to challenge us, have relationships that are going to better us, but also help other people to get better. Right. I mean, we're, we're there for each other. That, and uh, there's no doubt that as uh, the people help us, we're going to help them, whether it be through the mentor or through the mentee. That mentor-mentee relationship, I, I think, is unique. I think that's something that, that has grown <coughs> maybe over the last 15 years. Maybe it's, it's just that we've gotten to the point where we're more comfortable saying mentor-mentee. I think that kind of relationship has always been there through true friendship. Yeah, I, I agree. And many times a mentor might not even be someone that we'd associate as a friend. You know, it's just there as a, a, a person that can help us because they've experienced something that we haven't had the opportunity, but we seek out. And you've touched on this a little bit. Um, friendship's a two-way street. We can't just demand something out of somebody mm -hmm. and expect them to give it to us unconditionally, which we often do with family, but we're not talking about family. We're talking right. about the others, the friendship. It's important to be a friend in order to have a friend. Right. Um, I think if you say, I'm going to, I'm looking for friends, they're going to be few and far to find. But if, if I want to be a friend, it seems like they come out of the woodwork. So I think you have to uh, be there for others first, and then it'll reciprocate in time. What other tips do you have when, when we're talking about relationships? I, I think a big thing is um, uh, through a book I read talking about friendships and, and made a comment on the associations that we have in our life. There's an expanded association that we should search out for people that bring out the best in us, and uh, uh, so naturally we want to spend more time with them. And then there's a limited association for the people that, you know, it could be an aunt or an uncle or whoever, uh, we're going to be around them, but 15 minutes or an hour might be enough. We don't want to spend a day or a week with them. But then there's also disassociation. And, and I don't look at this as an unchristian point of view because <clears throat> there are some people that just don't bring out the best in us and maybe put us in a situation we don't want to be in. So we have to, uh, might have to disassociate with some people. And that can be difficult, but it, it at times we do have to make those decisions that mm. this relationship isn't doing us any good. We need to find relationships which are going to build us and also be reciprocal and, and build the other end of that relationship. Right. You know, it's been said that our relationships give us our highest highs and our lowest lows. And, uh, you know, the world's full of people and, and we're, we're to be there for each other. 
All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris has written about the eight facets of life for several different newspapers, and he is available to teach the eight facets of life. If you're interested in bringing him in as a workshop for your group or your organization, you can contact him via email at theconleys102 at gmail.com. And these episodes are also available online on our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com.